third year institute. Hi, I'm a third year student at MIT Manipal and I thought a lot of engineering aspirants actually don't know what engineering is about. Most of the IIT J aspirants have little to no idea what they're putting themselves into. Not to be a spoil sport, but it's pretty boring actually. So I thought maybe I should give you a little insight. Also very appropriate if you've just gotten into college, you've graduated from high school and gotten done with all your competitive exams. So happy for you. With a little emphasis on the practical side of things, most of what we learn is theoretical. Since it's the first year, you'll have all subjects. You'll have physics, chemistry, maths, biology. Even I never thought I would have to study biology after 10, but it is what it is. English, EVS and whatnot. You'll also have to study about engineering subjects other than your field of engineering. This is done so that you can change your branch at the end of your first year according to your CGP. One of the best things about the branch change situation at MIT is that you can change your branch from any branch to any branch. So it's not like you can't shift from biomedical to CSC just because the rank cutoffs were a little too high or someone else of an originally higher cutoff branch gets the nod over you just because they were earlier in that branch. It all depends on your first year CGPA completely same for all the branches. Now let's start with the actual curriculum. In most colleges, the entire batch gets divided into two groups. One of the groups goes through the physics cycle first and then the chemistry cycle and the other group goes through the chemistry cycle in the first semester and the physics cycle in the second semester. This is often done randomly so you won't be able to choose if you'd like to go through the physics cycle first or the chemistry cycle. From the name itself you can kind of guess that all subjects in physics cycle are kind of related more to physics than other branches of science and chemistry cycle has more subjects related to chemistry. Since my first semester was completely online, I cannot comment meaningfully on all the courses. I really have no idea what happened in class. So I went to the chemistry cycle first, which is apparently a good thing because it is unanimously opined that chemistry cycle is the tougher one. I don't really know. I thought that the physics cycle was a lot more difficult because I personally do not like physics at all. I had six subjects and three labs. The first semester's labs were conducted after the second semester's end sems. We had to stay back for about another month to finish them off because the first semester was online and they really for some reason insisted that we could not have the labs online. Starting with the first subject in chemistry cycle, engineering mathematics one. Offered by the mathematics department, we started off with some old topics that we'd already done in grades 11th and 12th. Along with that, we had some interpolation, some metrices, which was a little more advanced than the 12th grade material that we'd covered already. I had a really good instructor who I fortunately had in my second semester as well. So that made things a lot easier. For all subjects, I recommend that before the semester even starts, you go through the course plan of each and every subject that you have so that it gives you a little more idea, a little more control over whatever is being taught in the class so that you get a basic idea of what's about to come and aren't completely stumped every time the teacher introduces or starts a new topic in class. For engineering maths one, Gajendra Purohit sir on YouTube had a lot of useful playlists. Every problem was covered really extensively over there. I would highly recommend that channel for all mathematics courses. It is a lifesaver. Apart from that, there's a textbook by B.S. Greval, which is a must solve for all first year math courses. Just a tip, don't buy it new. Just ask some senior for it. You can buy it second hand because most of the people just use it for only one year and they're looking to give it away. Number two, biology for engineers. Biology, yeah, I don't remember a lot of it. Actually, strike that. I didn't remember any of it. Read the slides, pay attention in class, I guess. It's just chemistry pretending to be useful. The course is divided into four units, most of which require memorization, especially the first two parts. They're very chemistry heavy. Make sure you memorize all the chemistry reactions. The preparation would be very similar to how you'd studied for JE or your board exams. Definitely needs a little bit of time before. Number three, chemistry. See previous. Just kidding. Again, it's exactly like JE. Not the syllabus, but the way how you prepare it. Understand the theory, apply them for solving the problems, wrote, learn the equations. Number four, 
chemistry lab i have always loved chemistry labs love chemistry right from school as well if you're coming from a school who had never really conducted the experiments or never really let you touch the equipment you'll have an amazing time doing this now the grading in lab depends on some things if it's a lab with regular evaluation you have to attend every single lab all the experiments in every lab contain some form of marks which are going to add up to your final internal marks so your internals are going to be calculated based on how you perform every experiment in every single lab or it could be a lab with periodic evaluations which means that it's not compulsory to attend each and every lab you won't be evaluated in every one of them you just have to complete your 75% attendance quota there would be marks for record checking which are the easiest marks they're just throwing marks at you right now so make sure you don't give the evaluators an opportunity to cut marks in your record our chem lab was a little shortened because of the timetable but it was still a regular evaluation lab meaning every experiment contained some marks but we did not have to write the journal which saved us quite a bit of time just some tips for this lab be careful with your internal marks especially with the experiments with titrations in them because the markings are very strict the range that they have in their record is like a really short range so if you get a value that is outside any of those you'll get a zero that's why i lost a lot of marks over there otherwise i definitely would have gotten a better grade my answer was okay -ish. before you start make sure that all your equipment is proper and nothing is leaking so in the titration my burette wasn't sealing properly so that's why even after i had gotten the point to where my solution was a light pink the solution just kept dripping from the burette and that's why i had to do it for like three times so a lot of panic could have been avoided beforehand if i had checked before i started number 5 evs it was really simple there were multiple chapters and case studies you just had to memorize them and just as it is printed on the screen i also don't know why it was offered by the civil department makes no sense like it should have been offered by the humanities department more at that time i did not even care like this i found out when i was researching for this video i don't recommend that you spend much time on it because it's a two credit subject so your hard work would mean more in a three credit subject but don't flat out ignore it either because it's very easy to get an a in this subject it will really boost your cg number 6 basic electrical technology this is a nightmare like i'm already warning you this you have been warned just take this subject very seriously it had the maximum number of failures since this course was online for me i really had no idea about how difficult the course material or the exams would be i remember not being able to understand the lectures at all but when i was going through physics cycle offline in campus the other half of the batch was having their chemistry cycle and they had bd so looking at their results i realized what kind of a bullet that i had dodged in quizzes we used to have two 10 mark quizzes the average was 0.5 out of 10 and the midterms used to be of 15 marks and guess how much the average would have been in this 0.93 yeah yeah so you have been warned take the subject seriously also makes sense why it was offered by the electrical department it is just designed to be mad difficult okay well not exactly difficult but it just requires a lot of practice there's a lot of network analysis and solving circuits and that takes a bit of time to get used to there are notes of all subjects available at om xerox for bet i would highly recommend those i personally did not buy them but i had a look at them and they were pretty useful also make notes in class they're going to go a lot further than any notes or any subject material that you could borrow from someone else i also think that gate smashers and nisa academy had good videos on them but i'm not very sure so feel free to take a look number 7 psuc which stands for problem solving using computers personally very easy for me i already had a background in coding prior to joining college i had 4 years of coding in school from grades 9 to 12 that's why i already had my basics down this is 
is an introduction to programming in C language. We were made to code in code blocks. This was taught assuming that you had no knowledge whatsoever before you began this course. Very useful to grasp if you'd never programmed before. I highly recommend this one four hour video on free code camp about introduction to C. I watched it in one day and I was basically done with this. I did not have to put in any more effort. If you're a beginner coder, watch this video like somewhere over here. Number eight, PSUC lab. Again, very simple for me. Although I had always coded in Java and learned only a little bit of C++ before this, it did not take me a lot of time to get used to the syntax of C and how all the logic worked in this language. For a beginner, yes, this is your time to nail down the fundamentals so that in the future you don't have to spend more time on this. If you're going to be in a CS based branch, this is your first official introduction to how all your labs are going to look in your future. Some part of the internals is going to be in the form of a continuous evaluation, so like a viva or some tests. The tests are divided into two parts, the write-up and execution. Your first priority should be able to compile the code. Does not matter if it was a missing semicolon or an unclosed bracket. If your code does not compile, that's a complete zero straight away. Yes, you'll get some marks for the write-up, but since the invigilator now knows that your code did not compile, they'll assume that, oh, your write-up is wrong as well, and it will drastically reduce your marks in the write-up section as well. Also, do not spend a lot of time on the write-up because it is barely 20% of the marks. Focus on the code, try to at least get a partial output, and break your code down in steps so that a wrong part of the code does not affect your already correct part. This can be done in multiple ways, like using functions or just implementing some other programming tactics. You should ideally be trying till the end to solve the question, but in my opinion, you should realistically try to set targets in your last 10 minutes that, okay, for the next five minutes, you're going to be trying to test your correct output till whatever your program is working after commenting out all the wrong parts of the program. And then when you at least get done a sizable part of the question, then you try to go further and solve the remaining questions because the mass distribution is always unequal. They're trying to give you more mass. They don't want to fail you in labs. The initial output will always have a higher proportion of marks dedicated to it. So first solve that and then when everything over there is working, move on to the next parts. In the last minute, delete all the code that is not working. It's a ship that has sailed. There's no point in worrying about that. Do not wait until the last second to delete the code because once your monitor freezes centrally from the administrator, there is nothing that you can do to change your code. And once the invigilator unfreezes it, you cannot ask them for a second to just delete the code that is not compiling. You'll get a zero. Here are all the tips that I have for the labs. On to the next one. Number nine, engineering graphics one or EG one. Man, I sucked at this. Please pay attention in class when the professor is drawing on the board. This three hour class is not a free pass for you to nap. Do not sleep like I did. It's going to cause major troubles for you in the future. For the most part, try to observe how the professor is drawing the figure. They'll explain each and every question. There's like a worksheet with all topics and every topic has about 20 to 30 questions. So the professor is going to individually solve some questions and assign the rest of them for a take home assignment. What the professor teaches in class, I feel like that's more than enough. But since I didn't take it seriously, I had to beg a friend to teach me everything one day before the end set. I don't really have any YouTube playlists that I could recommend for this because I personally did not understand any of them, but other people did, so maybe they're useful as well. I don't really know, I wouldn't know. We did not have the CAD portion of the lab because of the shortened time span, just the drawing. Again, a lab with continuous evaluation, every assignment that you did had marks, which added up to your internals later. The NSEM is always out of 40 marks, the internals are of 60, and you need 40 to pass in the labs. So overall, 
not a lab where you have to do work outside the class just pay attention when the teacher is teaching complete the take home assignments properly it is also important because you'll have ag2 in the next semester which is built on a lot of basic concepts that you'll be taught in ag1 that is the first part of this video series in the next video i will be detailing about the physics cycle and what all subjects are taught in that as always like share subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye